We really appreciate you being here. I want to just start by reading the text messages that you two exchanged while the school was on lockdown and the gunfire was breaking out because I feel as though, uh, Mr. Elledge, that any, this just turns the blood cold of any parent to imagine getting these text messages from their kid while at school. Um, so, Chris writes, Dad, the school is on an unexpected lockdown. They've got sirens playing all in the school and the radios are going crazy. I'm in the PE room with four different entrances. Everyone is freaking out. It's not a drill. I'm actually scared. My heart is racing. I'm actually freaking out. I'm really scared. You, Mr. Elledge, write back, okay, calm down. Remember your training and breath. And then Chris writes, Dad, the announcements are going crazy. The speakers are telling everyone to get out of sight. The teacher thinks somebody is in the school. And Mr. Ellis, you write, I'm on my way to the school now. Um, Mr. Ellis, can you just tell us what, what happened when you got those texts? Well, it, you know, when you first hear them, you're, you're hoping it's not the worst. Uh, and then later in the message, when you hear the, you see the message for gunshots, you realize it is. so. Like any parent, you get scared, you want to get to the school, you want to grab your kid. How long did it take you to get to the school? Uh, approximately six minutes. And when you got there, what happened and what was the scene? So when I first got here, um, there, there wasn't a, a lot of cops here yet. They had the road blocked off. I couldn't pull into the school parking lot. So I turned around and parked over beside the school and walked over. Um, and there was one other parent here waiting as well. So we basically just stood and waited uh, to find out what we could and wait for the kids to come out. Oh my gosh, I mean, we can only imagine the uh, terrifying moments. And so Chris, what were those moments like in the gym as you were hearing um, school announcements? What were they telling you? Um, it was really, it was, it was just terrifying. It, it was scary looking around at my friends' faces, seeing that they were just as terrified as I was. And there was crying. People were crying in the classroom. Um, over the intercom, they had announcements going on saying lock down, uh, lock lights out of sight. And it just kept repeating over and over and over. And it, it just kept repeating itself for the whole course of the time that we were in the building. And it was. It was extremely scary. Um, the whole time you were just debating, and the, the first thought that you had was, I need to make sure my parents know what's going on, and I need to make sure my parents know I'm okay. I don't want them to worry. Oh my gosh, Chris and Mr. Elledge, what, a, what an ordeal to have to do this via text and to be so terrified. Mr. Elledge, when you said to Chris, remember your training and breath, what, what's that based on? Well, Christian's a national competitor in Taekwondo from Iron Horse Dojo in Colorado Springs. And they work a lot on pacing themselves and breathing and so forth so that uh, they can get through the training. And then also here at the school, on somewhat of a regular basis, they go through training uh, for these kind of situations. So um, in these times, remembering those things that you've learned is what I was trying to get to him. I mean, the idea that our kids have to go through regular lockdown training and active shooter scenarios just tells you the point that we've gotten to. And obviously, I don't have to tell all of you from Colorado uh, how long this has gone on and how crazy it is that you, as a freshman, Chris, have to live through this. And so when you were in the gym, how long were you in the gym? What were your classmates saying? And was it comforting to be in contact with your dad via text? Just having the text messages from my dad was, uh, it was relieving. It was great knowing that I had my friends right beside me sharing the same experience I was. I mean, of course, I wasn't happy that we were going through that, but it was, it's always better to have someone there with you when you're going through it. And um, being with my dad, you know, texting my dad and having him respond to me was just that extra feeling of relief gave me a little bit of reassurance that you know maybe I was going to be okay and as far as how long we were in the classroom I can't give you you know an exact time span but I can tell you that it was uh, it was a long enough to hear pretty much everything that went on it, it almost went on right outside our classroom uh, down the hall it transferred from like uh, down the hall to 
by our classroom and then it left, uh, it, the sounds faded away and then it came back and then the cops came and all you could hear was screaming and yelling in the hall and get down on the ground and it, it was, it was, it was terrifying, but having a, you know, being able to text my dad was just, it was really reassuring. It was relief. Chris, we can hear how shaken you still are, of course, because of what you've just lived through. How are you going to get through this and go back to school? Um, as a community, <laughs> we're going to get through it as a community because, you know, you don't stop your life just to, just because of one bad thing. You can't, you can't let that get in the way. You have to band together as a community. You have to stay strong. STEM strong, STEM strong. STEM is strong and we're a strong community and we will, we will get through this as a school and just with my friends and with my parents and with my community as a whole. Mr. Elledge, um, the parents of Kendra Castillo lost their only child and uh, the people in his class say that he and other heroic students um, charged the shooter. And I'm just wondering if you have anything you want to say to his parents. You know, I, we had a um, prayer vigil last night and uh, we all as a community recognized his heroics as well as the others. And, you know, it's, I, I don't know what you can say at the moment. You know, as far as the parents go, um, you know, what a great job as far as raising their kid. What a great kid. Uh, what a great loss to us as a community. So, um, you know, it, it, those, are, those are things that are hard to put into words. We as a community will be able to show them how much we appreciate what he did. Eldon and Chris Elledge, I think that you said it beautifully, Mr. Elledge, actually. Uh, we really appreciate your words. We're so sorry that you went through this. Take care of yourselves. This is going to be a long road. Can I say one thing? Yes. Kendra Castillo and Brendan Biley, you guys are heroes. And we owe our lives to you. And we owe our lives to the brave men and women and the police officers who got us out of there safely. You guys are amazing. Thank you for recognizing them. I know that they appreciate it. And I know that Kendrick's parents really appreciate your words, Chris. Did you know Kendrick? I did not know him personally, but I know that his smile illuminated the walls in our school. Everybody looked up to that kid. He was brilliant. He was, he was probably the best of us. He was, he was one of the best of us by far. He was just an extraordinary kid. You know, I didn't even need to know him personally to know that he was, he was a star student and he was just a star person who anybody could go to and look up to as a role model. And this is, he was the most undeserving of what happened to him. We can tell from the pictures. I mean, we can see that smile and we hear people talk about him. He was just a few days away from graduating. And Chris, what do you want to say to his parents? I'm so sorry. Um, I'm so sorry that we live in a society where you guys had to lose someone so important to this community and so amazing to our school. I'm, I'm sure that you guys did your best raising him. You guys did an unbelievable job raising him. He is an amazing person and you guys are parent role models as well. You guys should be very proud. Those are such beautiful words. I mean, Chris, it shouldn't be up to you guys to have to save yourselves and your classmates when you go to school every day. It shouldn't be up to students. You're there to learn, obviously, and to graduate and to go on to your lives. And the idea that this has happened so many times this week, there have been three different heroes, students, who have had to, well, heroes, and one was at a synagogue, who have had to stop a mass shooter on their own. And how do you make sense of that as a 15-year-old? I can't, I can't just even putting myself in the situation again, trying to remember how it went down and remember how I was feeling is impossible because it was too, it was too devastating and too, how I was feeling in the moment is too horrible to remember. 
And I can't imagine anyone who had to go through that in the past week or in the past year or whoever's had to go through a shooting like what happened here. Uh, you know, there's just the feeling of not knowing what's gonna come next. You know, worrying about what your parents are thinking and what your friends are thinking and getting texts from, you know, your friends all over the district who you haven't talked to in a while who are asking you if you're okay and if you go to STEM because there's a school shooter at your school and they're worried about you and it's just scary not knowing what's gonna come next. So, no, I can't, I can't even make anything of it even especially with the people that had to go through this at their schools.